Hello, I'm Margot Politis. Welcome to Study English IELTS Preparation. Today we're going to talk about adverbs. Adverbs are useful because they give us more information about an action, event or situation. If I said they were very useful, that would be an example of using the adverb very to add to or modify the word useful. But first, let's listen to our story about a new training program to help fix the problem of there not being enough skilled workers in Australia. For too long, we didn't train enough people. We didn't put enough energy into getting people into apprenticeships and traineeships. We just let market forces, laissez-faire approach uh, dominate, and it didn't work. We've established a school apprenticeship link program which this year will have 500 young West Australians, predominantly but not totally boys, providing them with apprenticeships, basically, that they can take up in the mining and other industries. Fortunately, I don't think it has been left too late, so long as we very proactively tackle the situation now and don't delay any longer. Okay, let's look more closely at adverbs. Adverbs work by modifying words. Adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, other adverbs, or preposition phrases. Using adverbs correctly will improve your communication skills. They answer such questions as how, how often, when, where, and why. Because they have different functions, it's useful to describe adverbs according to categories. Here are some of the categories that adverbs can be divided into. Adverbs of frequency. Occasionally, usually, frequently, often. Adverbs of place. Somewhere, here, outside. Adverbs of manner. Quickly, carefully, suddenly. Adverbs of degree. Really, fairly, very, rather, extremely. And finally, focusing adverbs. Specifically, only, particularly. Did you notice that most of these adverbs end in the suffix ly? Many adverbs are formed by adding ly to an adjective. For example, frequent plus lee, frequently. Careful plus lee, carefully. Quick plus lee, quickly. Real plus lee, really. Let's listen to Alan Carpenter, a state government minister talking about an apprenticeship program. He uses a number of LY adverbs. Can you identify the category they belong to? We've established a school apprenticeship link program, which this year will have 500 young West Australians, predominantly but not totally boys, providing them with apprenticeships, basically, that they can take up in the mining and other industries. Alan uses the adverbs predominantly and totally. These are degree expressions. They're adverbs of degree. Adverbs of degree can answer questions such as to what extent or to what degree. They also function as modifiers of adjectives and adverbs. Look at this sentence. They will provide 500 young people predominantly, but not totally, boys, with apprenticeships. Predominantly, but not totally. They answer the question, to what extent will the apprenticeships be offered to boys? Predominantly, but not totally. Let's listen to Dave Smith, head of the National Skills Shortages Task Force, 
talking about recruitments. He also uses a number of adverbs. Can you identify their category? Fortunately, I don't think it has been left too late, so long as we very proactively tackle the situation now and don't delay any longer. He says, so long as we very proactively tackle the situation. Proactively is an adverb of manner, which expresses how something happens or how something is done. In the sentence, we must very proactively tackle the situation. Proactively modifies the verb tackle, saying how the situation should be tackled. Next to proactively, we have another adverb, very. We saw this category of adverb earlier. It is an adverb of degree. Some adverbs of degree, however, can be further divided into intensifiers and downtoners. Adverbs that are intensifiers make adjectives stronger and downtoners make adjectives weaker. In the sentence, we must very proactively tackle the situation. The manner in which the situation is tackled is made stronger by adding the intensifier very. How proactively? Very proactively. Fortunately, I don't think it has been left too late, so long as we very proactively tackle the situation now and don't delay any longer. He also says, fortunately, I don't think it's been left too late. Fortunately is an adverb in another category. We call it an attitude marker. The adverb, fortunately, expresses a viewpoint on a situation and usually refers to the whole clause. Examples of other attitude markers include hopefully, surprisingly, apparently, and happily. Okay, now let's consider how many words and phrases used in English are borrowed from other languages. Some are pronounced as if they were English. For example, questionnaire and restaurant are from French, but pronounced in an English way. However, other words reflect the spelling and pronunciation of the original language, like détente and ballet. English borrows words easily. These words fill gaps in our language. Most of the vocabulary in English for ballet, for example, derives from French. Let's listen to Alan Carpenter talking. Can you identify the foreign word and the language from which it was borrowed? We didn't put enough energy into getting people into apprenticeships and traineeships. We just let market forces, laissez-faire approach uh, dominate and it didn't work. He uses the phrase laissez-faire. Laissez-faire is a borrowing from French. It closely reflects the pronunciation of the original language and the original spelling. Do you know the meaning of the phrase? Generally, it means non-interference or not getting involved, allowing things to act of their own accord. Here are some other French words that are commonly used in English. Au fait, faux pas, grand prix, encore, and entourage. And you can look them up in the dictionary. Okay, so today we've looked at adverbs and then talked about words borrowed from other languages into English. To find more on today's story and lots of other help and information, you can go to our website at abcasiapacific.com slash study English. I'll see you next time for more. Bye bye.